We should be live. You want to be on the show? Say hi. Come here, Mama. Why don't you take boys? Is it going? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Hey everybody, it's Freedom Friday. Let's talk about being self-sufficient and we're going to do another herbal video today. We're going to talk today about making medicine, herbal medicine, with infusions. Now there's different types. There's different types of approaches here. Just making sure I got video rolling. There's different types of approaches in terms of using herbs. Now, you guys have seen my herb room before and of course we have all these these herbs and they're all jarred and they're stored in these, these racks that we built for them so it keeps them nice and tidy. We probably got 200 or so uh, dried herbs in here and probably 20 or 30 of them are the ones that are actually used very commonly around here. Now, what I want to do is we're going to talk about the infusion today. So we've talked about making capsules, uh, there's, there's other things you can do too. There's decoctions, there's salves, there's tinctures, there's essential oils. We're going to focus on the infusion today because it's a very simple way. Most people have had an herbal infusion. Most people have, you know, had a cup of chamomile tea or maybe just black tea or something like that. But that's all an infusion is, is you're taking whatever, whatever plant material you have and you're putting it in a, in a cup of hot water and it becomes more medicinal in nature depending on what you put into it. Now, here's the beauty. When I first started with herbs, I, I would, I would have this mindset of, you know, well, let's let's see what this does, right? I get a new herb, so I get a bag, right? I have a, I have a bag of herbs. Here's some here's some red oak bark from Pen Herb, okay? And I'd have a bag of herbs, and I'd be like, well, what's it taste like? So I'd make a cup of tea out of it. I learned after a while and, and that you had to be careful with that. Now, I've never seen an herb in any sort of a mainstream sense that is like pharmaceuticals, where oh, you overdose and it's going to kill you. It, it it's just as a rule, herbs are not that way. God's medicine is not that way. And so the Herbal Encyclopedia is good. I talked about this one the other day because it's really good for formulas and stuff. A lot of really high, high-grade formulas in here that I use a lot. The Herbal Encyclopedia, I would say, is a little more mainstream in terms of use of herbs. So it's, it's, not, it's not getting super deep down into making formulas and stuff like that. But what it is is just a really good reference guide because I can, I can look up any herb. And so I can say, hey, let's... Let's take something like blue vervain, right? And so blue vervain, I know, is, is good for things like anxiety and stress and stuff like that. But we can actually go to the reference manual, and I can find vervain. And it talks about, you know, it's a digestive tonic. It's for the nervous system, headache and migraine. Its key actions are nervine, a mild sedative, and a mild bitter. So, you know, we're seeing parallels there. A bitter is really good for the digestive system. And, and bitters in the European diet or the American diet, maybe I should say, are, are not very well used. Bitters are actually really good. And so if you have like a bitter leaf salad or something like that, you may notice that, that your dinner settles better. So bitters are really good. A lot of times I'll take a bitter before dinner or a cup of bitter tea if my stomach's a little bit off. But vervain is, is more than that. And so you can look it up. Now, here's the thing to remember, too. When we talk about an herb, and this is one of the things that I think is, is confusing to people. We'll take an herb and we say, well, it does everything, right? Because you look in the book and it's like, well, it does this and it does that. And you're like, oh, I guess I just need this one herb. Here's the thing. And this is where this book actually comes in handy, the Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. Because it, to a degree, does actually say what its stronger points are. So you may have an herb that is is has you know all these different actions but there's kind of one action that or two actions that it's really known for and that's where it comes into mixing all these different herbs like i was saying when i first started i would get these and i would just make a cup of of tea one day i got labellia now labellia is really good it's a very good antispasmodic uh, you know, I mean, it'll stop hiccups. It'll it'll help with cramps. I mean, really fast. Uh, people people use it for for seizures and things like that. I haven't been able to use it in that context myself. Thankfully, I haven't had to deal with that. But I always keep labellia tincture on hand, like this. And we'll talk about tinctures another day. But I make a cup of tea because that's how I would test things. I'm like, well, you know, I'm I, I, I no good healer is gonna give anybody something that he's not willing to take himself. Well, and there's some truth in that, but I learned my lesson because I made a cup of 
of labellia tea and I'm drinking this labellia tea and I'm like, whoo, this is hot stuff. You know, this, it tingles a little, right? And after about 15 minutes, I'm sitting there watching, watching a movie or something and drinking my labellia tea and all of a sudden I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, I poisoned myself. And so I go out, I run to the door and I start taking these deep gasps of air and I, I stop just in time. And so I, I come back and look at my book and labellia is also an emetic. <laughs> and so that was one of my lessons in, hey, hey, know what you're using. Don't be paranoid. This isn't pharmaceuticals, but, but study your medicine and know what you're using. And even if you're, even if you're experimenting on yourself, you should know what you're using. And this was, this was four or five years ago when I started getting into herbs. And so there's two sides of this. Herbs, by and large, are not dangerous. They're not something to be afraid of. They're not something you have to worry about. Well, if I mix blue vervain with, with black walnut, will I get some kind of an interaction that'll kill me? No, that's not how herbs work. That's not to say that you should just grab any herb and, and take a massive dose because some herbs like labellia, like comfrey, things like that, they are very powerful. Then you have other herbs like let's say chamomile, right? Chamomile is a great herb to make an infusion out of because it's, it's just calming, it's relaxing, it's not super intense, it's not super strong, and you can drink a lot of it, really. It's not, it's not gonna have any, any negative effects. Whereas if you're taking a little bit of labellia, another thing it does is it clears up the cough if you got a dry cough. I never allow a dry cough in this house. But if you got a dry cough, a few drops of labellia will really help loosen up that cough. That doesn't mean you wanna drink a whole cup of it. So know your basics, and this is not as hard this is not as hard as it sounds, and uh, it's it's very powerful stuff. Honey, do you want to come watch the the feed here? As long as Titus will be quiet. So, okay, let's talk. Let's continue. Then let's talk about this infusion. So, all the infusion is is the herbs put in hot water. The difference between an infusion and a decoction essentially is that an infusion you're not actually boiling it in a pan. You're not simmering it on the stove. So you're just taking herbs and we put it in like a tea ball here and you make an infusion of that and you you steep it just like a cup of tea that's all it is is a cup of tea whereas a decoction and we'll deal with that another day a decoction you're actually taking the herbs and you're pulling more out of them by simmering them or, or heating them actually on on a heating element so right now we're just going to make an infusion now here's the thing here's one of the things with herbs that is a common i want to say mistake maybe that's the wrong word with herbs People are so used to pharmaceuticals that they think, oh, if I if I take a pill, right? Here's here's a here's a capsule of lower bowel. This is what we we capsuled up the other day is, is lower bowel formula. If I take one of these, right, it's gonna it's gonna do something, and that's it, right? I only need to take that one a day. That's how the mindset is from pharmaceuticals. Oh, I'll take an Advil or I'll take two Advil. With herbs, they're not they're not concentrated chemicals. And so what happens is people say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ill or I'm not feeling well, so I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'll make an infusion. Well, an infusion in a lot of cases is one of the more milder preparations of herbs. You know, you have decoctions, which can be stronger. You have, you have tinctures. Hey, you're fine, buddy. You have tinctures, which are even stronger yet. And you better go help him find something to do. And so you have these different levels. Well, an infusion is not necessarily terribly strong. And so what'll happen is people say, oh, I'm dealing with this. I tried herbs. I had a couple cups of tea, right? And it didn't really do anything. Well, of course it didn't do anything because you didn't treat the problem. So a cup of tea, a single cup of tea, if I'm, if I'm stressed out, like last night, you know, I was, I was a little bit uptight and stressed out. And so I sat down before bed and I drank a cup of tea. And what did I do? I, I took, I took, uh, some skull cap. So skull cap is very good for nerves. In fact, this is used in one of my favorite nerve formulas called Relaxes. It's another Dr. Christopher formula that is in this book here. I talked about it the other day and you can also look it up on his website. But here's what I'm going to do. I will come in and, and look around at my herbs and based on how I'm feeling. Now, if I'm doing a long-term treatment, hey, there's a problem or I'm sick or something like that, then I need to say, well, what formula can I use? Or what can I use that I can consistently take? You know, if I'm having a stress issue or if I'm having a bowel issue, now I might say, well, I'm going to take lower bowel and I'm going to take five, six, seven, eight, ten capsules a day, right? I mean, I've seen herbal formulas for things like for things like thyroid or something like that, where people were taking 15 capsules a day, whereas with a, with a modern pharmaceutical, they might take one or two. It's not that they're overdosing, it's that herbs are natural. Herbs are completely a different approach and you've got to dose accordingly. That doesn't mean you should just guzzle the whole bottle down, right? I mean, if I if I started drinking labellia tincture like this, I would be puking my guts out in probably 60 seconds. 
so that wouldn't be ideal. But most herbs are actually milder. You know, we think of, people think of herbs and they think of, oh, marijuana, right? Marijuana, you take a little bit and it's going to get you high. Well, I'm not into getting high. Marijuana definitely has real medicinal value for sure. And that's something we can talk about another day. However, marijuana, the reason it's so strong is because it's been cultivated for decades. The original cannabis was not near as strong as the stuff they're making today. And so for better or for worse, the cannabis that's being produced today is extremely modified from its original form, even though it certainly does have very good constituents in it. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of skullcap. I might say, hey, I'm a little stressed. I'm going to put some skullcap. Skullcap is a great long-term stress reliever, but a cup of skullcap tea can really just mild things down. Let's grab some of that blue vervain that we just looked at, because that's good for stress and nerves. So I'm going to put a little blue vervain in there. And let's go and uh, let's try, let me grab some, some passion flower. So I'll take some passion flower. And I'll put that in there. Maybe I'll do some chamomile. A lot of times, if I just want to relax, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little skull cap and a little chamomile, and, and that's a really good combination. I'll add some peppermint leaf sometimes. Now, peppermint leaf, of course, has its action, but what peppermint leaf is also really good for is a lot of herbs are, are slightly bitter, kind of earthy, and, and for a lot of people, they don't like the taste of them very well. Now, I, I'm rather used to the earthy, bitter taste, and it doesn't really bother me. But, but if you're dealing with someone who, you know, you want it to be pleasant for them, you can take these... And you can add something that has more of a pleasant taste. Chamomile has a fairly pleasant taste. Peppermint has a fairly uh, pleasant taste. Spearmint, things like that, okay? So at this point, we've taken these herbs, and here's just a nice evening cup of tea just to kind of relax me. Now, if I'm wanting to go to bed, wanting to go to sleep, maybe I'll put a little bit of valerian in there, something like that. Now, here's the thing. You want to steep it pretty good. Let it, let it soak up, especially if you're dealing with root herbs like valerian where they're hard and, and it has to soak up because it's going to take longer. Usually I'll let a cup of steep tea steep for 10 or 15 minutes. You know, there's not a set rule on this, but when it's strong enough to the way you like it, you drink it. Some people add honey to it because they want it to be a little sweeter. So this is an infusion. And what, what's an infusion used for? An infusion can be used for a lot of things. For example, if you take uh, somebody that has, has a fever or, or is coming down with a cold, right? You could take uh, elderflower and yarrow. Yarrow induces sweating and, and that combination is, is well known to help with colds and stuff like that. It doesn't taste very good. So you might want to add some honey or some peppermint. But say I make an infusion of, of yarrow flower, excuse me, elderflower and yarrow, and now I'm drinking this, and the herb combined with the heat of the infusion is actually going to induce sweating. So it's really good for breaking a fever or something like that. Uh, people will also use uh, a bone set is, is a popular one, uh, especially with, with the natives. And it's... It's interesting because there's a lot of herbs that'll do a lot of different actions. It's not like there's only one herb for, for only one thing, most of the time. Some herbs, though, are very special. Some herbs like labellia are very special. Comfrey is very special. There's certain herbs that are just so powerful at what they do that, that you could argue they're the best at what they do. And so here we are. We have this infusion going. You can see it's starting to, it's starting to infuse right in there. And so we make this cup of tea. This is a great way to go in and you've got your herbs, and it doesn't matter if you have a few or if you have a lot like this. You say, well, what do I have and how am I feeling? It's a great way to learn about your herbs because you're not dealing with something super strong. You still want to know what you're putting in yourself, absolutely, and, and know what you're doing. But with loose dried herbs, they're safe. For the most part, they're very safe. Now, essential oils, you know, you wouldn't want to just go, go taking essential oils and, and putting them in. Essential oils are something we'll talk about another day. And it's interesting because essential oils are kind of a fad right now, people are a little bit flippant with essential oils. But essential oils are incredibly potent and incredibly strong and should be handled with extreme care in terms of how they're used. It doesn't mean they're not very powerful. So essential oils, just like any other herb, are powerful. People tend to separate the two. Really, it's all just herbs. But essential oils are more of an herb taken out of its natural scent. It's so concentrated down that you want to be really careful. I would never take essential oil and just put a bunch in a cup of tea and make a cup of tea out of it because it's too much. It's too potent. It's too powerful. It might be the equivalent of, of saying, hey, I'm going to take some essential oil. <laughs> it might be the equivalent of taking this whole bag of, of herbs and downing it, right? And so you want to be careful with that. 
but on point with an infusion. You find out what herbs you want and you can mix and match them. Herbs don't have interactions like pharmaceuticals do. And so you might make something that you don't like, or you might make something that, you know, my stomach feels a little bit off if, if you're not paying attention, which is why you should pay attention. If you make a cup of senna tea to help your digestive system work better, but you don't add anything else to it to offset it, or you don't take it with a meal, you may find it gives you an upset stomach because that's a known effect of senna tea. It's not going to kill you. It's not, it's not going to be the end of the world, but you're probably not going to want to do it again. So have a good herbal encyclopedia along with your formula book so you can just have a reference guide for all the herbs. And again, this one I have is uh, Andrew Chevalier's Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. And I'm sure there's other ones, but I like this one because there's a lot of illustrations. Not the best formula book, but just a good general reference book to have on the shelf. And here's our tea. We've only had about five minutes here now, but you can see that it's starting to infuse. And, and uh, let's see here, one drink. Two drink, three drinks. Oh, 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 I overdosed. That's how that, that welcome. That's how the pharmaceutical world is, right? I, I could down this whole thing. It's fine. I could have two. I would say that infusions are the milder application of of herbal medicine. Tinctures tend to be way stronger. Decoctions are going to be stronger. A lot of times, cells. That doesn't mean infusions are weak. It means that if you were dealing with an ongoing ailment you're not going to say, hey, drink one cup of tea and this is going to fix it. I might drink one cup of tea to relax, but if I had if I had a condition I was dealing with, it would take consistent application of that tea. So if you're trying to break a fever, in that sense, a tea is better than a capsule because you're combining it with the heat of the water. But you need to be drinking like, hey, drink a cup of this every half hour, right? There's a formula called Chest Comfort. It's also in this book, and it's a powder that, that we mix up, and it, it uses... Well, it's, you can look it up. If you look up Dr. Christopher's chest comfort on Google, you'll find it. But it's phenomenal for just clearing the head if you have like a, like a, a, a sinus thing going on or a cold or allergy or something like that. It's just a phenomenal formula that's been used for a long, long time. It's certainly not something I invented. And honestly, I don't even think Dr. Christopher invented it. It's a known formula. And you grind it really fine and sift it. And so you actually make a powder. And it's really easy to make. You just stir it into water and it dissolves and you make this powder. And it's a little bit spicy because it has some cayenne in it, but it's phenomenal. It clears you up. It just helps ease all that misery, right? So there are infusions that are that are very powerful and potent. But even at that, if you were dealing with a treatment on that, you would drink a cup. And then maybe an hour later, you drink another cup. Don't get into the trap of, oh, I tried herbs. I had a cup of tea and it didn't heal me. <laughs> and so therefore, herbs don't work. If, if you're dealing with something that's ongoing, like a chronic condition, now you might want to look at capsules, like we've talked about making capsules, because then you can say, hey, I'm just going to take three of these capsules a day, right? And you're, you're delivering the herbs. All these different methods we're talking about are methods of delivery. You know, a cup of tea can be relaxing. It's a mild way to deliver herbs. A decoction can taste really gross, but it might be a stronger way to deliver herbs. A salve is great for surface situations, like the bone and tissue ointment. There's uh, instructions for making that on my blog, callmegav.com, and that's also a Dr. Christopher formula. Uh, I make my, my respiratory cream, which is one of my own formulas, and the respiratory cream has uh, is made from essential oils, actually, versus the loose herbs, and it's just phenomenal. It's a very easy cream to apply, and it helps a lot with respiratory and with, with colds and coughs and things like that, so anytime I feel something like that coming on, I'll apply that. That's another form of delivery. Then you get into tinctures, which are concentrated more. Then you go to essential oils, really, which are, are even more concentrated than a tincture. They're essentially distilled, the oil distilled out of the herb. And so that's like a super concentrate. Different ways to deliver, and you want to be careful. Don't rush into anything and just say, oh, I'm just going to start throwing this at somebody. I'm, I'm more free and easy if I'm trying something on myself than, of course, I am on something else because I can feel what it's doing to me. I can feel how I'm responding to it, and I know how it's going to react. I know that skullcap and, and uh, peppermint leaf and passion flower and blue vervain is, is good stuff. It's just going to just gonna relax me a little bit. It's not going to put me to sleep. It's not going to make me high. Nothing weird. It's just a nice, relaxing infusion cup of tea. And so if we have that knowledge, we combine that knowledge, we take some, some herbs and we look at different ways to apply them and we get some learning behind that. This, this really isn't rocket science. You know, I've been studying this for about five years and I've waited a few years to start talking about it and teaching about it because 
I'm building my knowledge. But you can go out. The way I started is just going out and starting studying, buying books, reading materials, watching videos, talking to other herbalists, asking questions, and seeing what works. And what we're going to do in this coming series on self-sufficiency is talk about using herbs for medicine in a way that's that's flexible so that we're not reliant on on pharmaceuticals all the time, on running to the doctor. We should be reliant on, on God, and we should be reliant on what we can do with the, with the labor of our hands. That doesn't mean that, that all doctors are evil. It doesn't mean we should never go to the hospital. I mean, if I cut off my hand, the doctor's going to be a lot better at putting it back on than I am. However, we should learn to do that as well. Anyways, I hope you guys got some out of this. Is there any questions I need to answer, baby? Um, how long do herbs last? The herbs last, is, this is going to be a variable thing in terms of how long the herbs last, but in general, a long time. Um, loose herbs tend to last longer than powdered herbs. So, you know, you can see that this is just a loose kind of chopped herb in this skull cap here. And so I go through it pretty fast, but there's some herbs that I use less often that maybe they've been in here for a few years and I wouldn't hesitate to use them. Sometimes you'll get tea. A lot of times when you buy tea bags, you'll look at the herbs and they're, they seem kind of faded and they're old and they probably have lost some of their potency, but the reality is there's still constituents there. They still work. Now, if I took this and I set, set it in the sunlight all summer long, yeah, these would probably be ruined because the, the UV rays would just be destroying that. But you see, I have them in an area and a room here where the light's pretty well controlled. And so I'm coming in here and I don't really have concern about them spoiling anytime soon. I would say people that sell herbs are probably putting a shelf life of a couple years on them. And of course, they're rotating them around. That doesn't mean if you have an herb that's been here for four or five years that it's not usable. It just means you should be aware of it. In my case, the most important herbs I'm using consistently, I'm going through them fast enough that it's not an issue. A powdered herb is going to tend to not last quite as long as... It's a, a loose herb, and a lot of times when you go to a, an herb store like Pen Herb, they'll sell this in a powder form or in a loose form. A powder form is great if you're making capsules or something because then you don't have to grind it, but personally I prefer a loose form because I can see it, I can touch it, I can make sure it looks right, and it also lasts longer and I can use it for things. I can have one jar and use it for capsules, use it for teas, use it for, for decoctions, use it for salves, all that kind of stuff. And then once you tincture an herb, you tincture an herb in alcohol, which we'll talk about that another day. A tincture is essentially a concentrated herb suspended in alcohol. That lasts pretty much indefinitely. I keep them in the dark bottles, and they last a long, long time. So, um, Somebody else was wondering that how you built the jar racks. The jar racks, um, I kind of came up with the idea, and Nathan worked on those while I was on the road. But basically, they're just quarter-inch uh, plywood from the from the home supply store, not plywood, but this is actually, well, it's plywood, but it's it's a wood wood. It's like hickory or something like that. And then we got a, a four, I believe this is a four and a quarter inch hole saw. And we kind of set up a jig with a stack of these and just drilled all these holes out. And then we bolted them together. So there's a bolt coming out from the wall. And basically these panels are slid on with a couple little dividers to do the right height. And maybe at some point I'll do a blog post. We're still kind of refining the design of these and figuring out what works best, but yeah, this is definitely the closest thing we found is these racks here because I can get hundreds of jars on the wall out of the way and it makes it really easy access if I'm in here working and, and mixing stuff up. So, all right, that's the infusion. Infusions are a great way to just get a just get a quick infusion, you know, just relax, get get something that calms you down, maybe get a get a boost of energy. I mean, coffee is just an infusion. That's all it really is. And so I'm going to go have some of that right now after I have my relaxing infusion. And no, they won't have an interaction and kill me. It's fine. So we'll talk about some of the other methods. You know, we've talked capsules. Those are a great way for long-term delivery. Infusion is a great way for short-term delivery or speedy delivery uh, if, you, if you're trying to deal with a fever or something like that. And we'll look at some other stuff another day. You guys have a good Friday.